So what I will walk you through today is, I preface that my talk already with this, is in no means intended to replace, and indeed you will see it will be impossible to replace the work of human interpreters. It's an incredible ability, and so what I will be talking to you about is technologies that can be applied for the rest of us. We have to remember the dream in Europe and indeed in the world is for all of us to communicate and understand each other regardless of the language. In most situations, we cannot possibly go through the effort and the expense that we can afford in the European Parliament. Now with this, let me begin my talk. It is of course well understood in this crowd that we are living in a global village. We do work together and increasingly the world is globalizing. We um, practice exchange and communication and uh, in Europe in particular, it is a mandate for all of Europe to integrate uh, regardless of language uh, uh, separation. Now on one side, those, there might be some who might argue we should just all speak the same language, but at the same time there is an opposing trend that insists on the cult cultural diversity, on the beauty, identity, language, culture and custom of each language and each country. And that pride in the individualism must be understood uh, if we want to reach the hearts and minds of our brothers and our sisters worldwide. And that presents the challenge. How do we achieve this global village while at the same time not ignoring our cultural identities? Now, no other place in the world understands us as well as Europe, with 24 languages by last count, uh, plus many dialects. It is, of course, a daunting challenge to do this and to achieve this type of integration. Currently, it's done by human translation and or it's not done at all. Most of the conferences I attend are all in broken English. Now, if you look at how well people speak in English in Europe, you know, for those of you who believe that switching to English is the solution, I invite you to look at this slide where you see that across the different countries in Europe, only an average about 30 to 40 percent of people speak English well enough that they could conduct business with each other. So we have to dismiss this as a solution, and uh, indeed it's probably not desirable to do that anyway. Now what else can we do? Now of course there's human interpretation and translation. There's currently about uh, 500,000 translators worldwide, 150,000 of them work in Europe. These are numbers you might correct me with, but this is our research. It's already about a $31 billion market, and the EU is one of the largest, uh, spending 1.3 billion euro on translation and interpretation. Around the world, as impressive as it is with 24 languages, it pales with a challenge worldwide. There are 6,000 languages roughly in the world, and if you wanted to have everyone translated to everyone in the planet, you would have to provide 36 million translation directions. Indeed, that's impossible. So thus, it is only a small fraction of what could be translated that is actually being translated or interpreted. And this is just text. For speech, of course, it is, the situation is worse. There are about 300,000 conferences per year in Europe. Um, One percent or less are interpreted, actually, by human interpreter. On YouTube, every minute, 13 hours of new videos come online. We have television that reaches every satellite television that reaches every part of the world. Lectures, governments, universities, corporations all produce speech in a constant, uh, constant pace. And <clears throat> meetings, telephone conversations, travel, dialogue and encounters, all are events where we speak with each other and indeed we can't usually do it by in each other's languages. So can, what can be done? I <clears throat> believe that it is an enormous challenge that can cannot be met alone by human effort alone, and this is where we have devoted a large part of our time, effort, and money to come up with automatic solutions. So can technology provide a solution? It is, of course, a very difficult effort to do translation or interpretation of speech from one language to the other. For 20, more than 20 years, we're now working on this problem, and the problem roughly involves three different steps in two directions. If I want to speak or interpret from 
uh, English into Spanish, the first thing I need is a speech recognition system that converts the spoken word into text. The second module will be a translation system that converts the text from English into text into Spanish. And then on the other side, I need a system that pronounces the Spanish text in Spanish speech so that the counterpart can hear it. When that other person wants to respond, once again, we need Spanish speech recognition, translation from Spanish into English, and text-to-speech synthesis in English. Now, this has been work for many, many years, and it is only recently, in the last 10 years, that increasingly we have even understood that programming such systems is impossible due to the large number of rules that would be necessary to understand human language. Therefore, all modern methods really resort to automatic learning techniques. Our machines that I will present you today are all automatically trained by learning machines on data that has become available. The Internet increasingly makes large volumes of data available. So we can go to the Internet, we can collect data worldwide uh, to, to provide or to produce data based on which we can train the systems. We collect speech data and we collect translation data and with that data our learning machines constantly learn and improve to do this task. I will not bore you with the details of what, how these models work, but think of them as dictionaries and then also contextual memories or language models as we call them that uh, collect statistics such that we can increasingly learn how words are translated and how they are used in context in uh, each of the situations we might encounter. So with these techniques, we have gone through a four-phase um, research agenda. In the early 90s, late 80s, we came out with the very first systems that showed feasibility of such systems. Our early system, Janus, was the first in Europe, uh, where you could speak a sentence from 200 possible sentences. It would take five minutes to do this, and finally you would get a sentence on the other side, but you would have to make sure that your sentence was syntactically correct and was limited to 100 or 200 word vocabulary. Clearly not very practical. In the next 10 years, we worked on producing spontaneous systems. When people speak, they can stay limited to a particular domain, but they cannot be limited to vocabulary and cannot be limited to speaking style. We constantly hesitate and interrupt ourselves. We go uh and mm and mm <clears throat> and produce all kinds of hesitations. All of these must be handled. Luckily, out of this emerged two directions, which we now finally are in a position to apply in the real world. One is mobile consecutive interpretation devices that are mobile and therefore can be carried along. These are important for travelers, for humanitarian missions, for uh, healthcare providers, for police and military, for various parts of the government where people are in a mobile situation and have to go out into the field. The second that I will also present you is simultaneous interpretation in a more stationary environment. Think uh, broadcast news or um, university lectures or um, government speeches and so on. 